Good morning and welcome back to the garage. It's actually a rainy morning here today so I had to push myself to get out of bed. But I'm here now, I've got a bit of time before I have to get ready for work. And as you've seen in the title, I want to get the valve clearance done. Or this morning at least have it checked and see if I need to order any shims. So this video is shot in the middle of the running issues video which you may have already seen. If not you can check out my channel and see it there. But yeah, the plastics are already off. And I want to get the airbox off, get all the battery, battery tray, whatever is on top, ignition coil is probably there as well. Uh, yeah, take everything off, get to, he to the head cover, take it off and inspect the valve clearance. So yeah, time is short, so let's get to it. So the intake valves should be 0.05 to 0.1. It appears one of them is within spec, but the other one's a bit loose at 0.15. Just a tip when checking the exhaust valves, make sure your decompression globe is out of the way. So exhaust side should be 0.25 to 0.3. That is spot on. And this side is a bit tight at just 0.2. So I know my valve clearances now, I know what I need to adjust. So the first step is put the engine atop the center. Now the correct, or the, the way specified in the manual would be to lock the crank. There's a hole down on the bottom of the crankcase, I'll show you in a bit. Lock that with a special tool. Uh, take the, take the, everything off, take the chain guide, take the chain tensioner off, and remove the cams completely. But I think that's a bit unnecessary. I'm gonna take the plug down the bottom and just inspect the crank. There's a cut in the crank itself. So you'll be able to see that if it's in the center of the hole. And I'm not gonna take the tensioner out. I'm just gonna take the top little guide off. I'm just gonna put some zip ties on the cam pulleys and the chain to keep it all in place. 
and do it that way. So you're gonna see in a bit, it, I think it's a bit easier, less stuff to do. And also when you put it back, you can still inspect everything's timed correctly before you before you move on. So let's do that. So that bolt right there covers the hole that we're supposed to use for locking the crank. Be careful, you might have some oil dripping out because the bike sat for a while. So the oil from the tank had a chance to leak back into the crankcase. But yeah, let's take the plug out. We've got a container underneath just to catch any leaking oil. Hopefully not too much. So I've got a bolt here with a pointy tip, which is not exactly like, but similar to the BMW special tool. I'm just gonna put this in. To say this is a bit optional using the method I'm going to show you, you don't necessarily have to do this, especially if you want to avoid the messy oil dripping. But yeah, I'm going to put this bolt in and try to lock the crank in place. And that's it, I've got the crank locked. I'm just going to slightly turn my ratchet just to make sure. So yeah, crank is definitely locked. My marks on the cam sprockets are still aligned, so everything's good. So we're ready to move on to the next step. So the first thing I want to do before I go further is use some zip ties and just put one over each cam and through one of the holes, doesn't matter which one. The aim is just to keep the chain from jumping a tooth on the sprocket. So that's going to make sure that these two stay in time. Do the same for the exhaust cam. That's it, they're fairly tight, not too tight, but just enough to make sure that it can't jump a tooth. So yeah, the cams, we know for sure they're not gonna jump a tooth. There's the possibility, if you're not careful, that the chain will jump a tooth on the crank sprocket. But because the chain tensioner is still in place and it's a spring type that goes in and out as it needs to, that's very unlikely if you're careful. So some of you may say that I didn't check the clearance correctly. I've done it with the lobes 180 degrees away from the valves rather than as it is now. The manual says check it with the engine at top dead center. And that's just because it makes it easier. You don't have to move it around, but I'd argue both methods are correct. The one I use is sort of more foolproof in a way. But either way it works because if you look right here, you may be able to see a slight wear mark this face here is slightly more polished, polished by the back one. So that's because the back one is always supposed to have a clearance. This is a round surface here. It's always meant to have a clearance between the shim and the cam. Whilst this is touching it and it's slightly polished. So yeah, anywhere you check in this area, it should be fine. So let's see if the clearance is any different. Got a point 0.1 shim. Really easy. Look fine. Point one five doesn't go in there. So that that one's correct. Slides in nicely in here. So this is too loose. So it's the same measurement. Let's try the exhaust ones as well. Point two. Slides in easily, so that's fine. About the same. But that would be too tight. Let's try the point five, which is the minimum gap we are supposed to have, and this is fine. Try the other one. It doesn't go. So that one's too tight. So yeah, made no difference. The measurements are the same as before. So we can move on and take the bolts out and uh, measure the shims, take them out and measure them. Just a bit at a time on each of them. Take them out nice and evenly.
so here I am ready to look at the first shim I'm just gonna pop the valve out pop the cam shaft out Here we go, you can move this slightly out of the way. It's on a dowel. Now I should be able to just pop this shim out. There we go. We've got it. So there's a very fine marking there, but we can't really see the size of it. So I've got a micrometer to measure it. And I've made myself a little chart with the shims. Hope it's not too bright, the paper. So I've got two, the exhaust valves intake, the chain is on this side. I've got 0.2 clearance on that one, which needs to be adjusted. And 0.15 on this one, which I've just taken out, which needs to be adjusted. The other two are fine. So let's measure the shim on this one, and then calculate the desired shim thickness to, to actually get the right clearance. So that's bang on 2.5 millimeters. So the gap is too too large, so I need 0.05 bigger. So my new shim needs to be 2.55 millimeters. So I've popped this shim and the cams back in place for now. And let's have a look at the exhaust ones. So this clearance was too tight, so I need a slightly thinner shim. This is 2.4 millimeters. So to make that clearance bigger, we need a shim thinner at 2.35. And yeah, I have to get some new shims on order, and uh, we'll see you in a few days. So here we are, it's a couple of days later, and I've got two new shims. So let's not waste any time and put them in. That was a bit careless of me, but it is quite early in the morning. Here we have a new shim, 2.55, it says on it. It's always best to double check that. And it is indeed 2.55. So I've got my second shim here, 2.35, and it is spot on. So let's pop this in, put a bit of oil on it. So I've got my shims in place, I'm ready to bolt the cams back down, the camshafts, but we've got a problem. Some of you who were paying attention may have noticed we've skipped it two, twice. First time was accidental, I was just too confident in my method. Second time was more or less deliberate, because I just wanted to see how easy it is to do it. And it's quite easy. Trouble is, it only goes one way. You can only rotate the cams clockwise. Trying to do it the other way to, to repair your mistake isn't that easy anymore so it's probably you can't you probably can't see it from this angle but we've got one mark up there and another one down there so it actually looks like it's more than a couple of teeth but the good news is we've locked our crank in place so we know that that's in the right position and now we're just gonna undo the zip ties and and try to move the cams back in their place There we go, I think that's in the right place now. It was probably three teeth. So we can 
reuse our zip tie now, put it back here, and do the same with the exhaust cam. Here we go, cams are back in the right place now. I realized I should have taken a shot from this angle before to see how, how far they were misaligned. It was actually probably 40. Now I haven't been very careful on counting them, but it was probably 40 away from where it should be. So just proves how easily it is to, to make a mistake and slip. So it's probably always a good idea to lock the crank anyway, even if you do plan to use the initial method intended. So yeah, we're in the right place now. So let's bolt everything back together. These have a torque of 10 newton meters according to the manual. There isn't a tightening sequence, but I'm just going to do it in a crisscross pattern to make it safer. Just going to tighten them one step and then go to full torque. Make sure they're all seated nicely. And now down to full torque. Good, all done. I can remove my zip ties again now. So here we are, we've got the timing all aligned. Now it's time to remove the locking tool, the special BMW locking tool, and uh, turn the engine over, see if the marks to line up. So here we are, we're nearly there. I'm just gonna turn the engine over twice until my marks line up again uh, and double check the valve clearance, obviously. And it's a bit annoying, but I'd like to check the timing, obviously, as well, but I don't know where the crank is. I'll just assume it's in the right position, but anyway, on this design of engine where the sprockets aren't actually adjustable, being a tooth out is a lot, so that's probably easy to spot anyway. Out there, everything seems fine. Let's get a set of feeler gauges 0.15. This used to go in here, but it doesn't anymore. 0.1 slides in nicely, spot on. Same here. So, yeah, this one's slightly tighter than the other one, but still within tolerance. So these are both very nice. Let's check the exhaust now. That one was a bit tight, so let's start with 0.2. Goes in both. 0.25. Nice. Spot on. 0.3. No. No. So yeah, the clearance is perfect now. Timing should still be good. No reason why it shouldn't. All of these are torqued up. We can just put our chain guide back in place, clean the surface up and put our cover back on. So I've got the two bolts cleaned up, put a tiny bit of Loctite on them. We definitely don't want these coming loose. Let's put them in and torque them to 10 Newton meters now. Everything seems to be 10 Newton meters here. Here we are, I've got the cover back in place. I've started all the threads by hand just to make sure they're lined up. I'm gonna just run them down now and torque them all to 10 Newton meters.
So yeah, valve clearance is all done. Putting everything back together is fairly straightforward. You can just watch the video in reverse, I guess. Obviously, being a BMW, everything has a torque spec, but nothing's really critical from now on, so just be sensible. And uh, yeah, it's not a difficult job, maybe a bit time consuming, but it's definitely a skill worth having if you own one of these bikes, because because if I remember correctly, they have a, a valve clearance interval of 6,000 miles, so that's about 10,000 kilometers, which is quite frequent, so you don't really want to pay someone, especially if you do many miles, you don't really want to pay someone every time to do this, so learning how to do it yourself is probably worth it. So yeah, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again next time.